but looks can be deceiving. Gerald Johnson was shy. He was kind of the guy behind the camera. He also had been battling depression for some time. Most kids at Modern Day ignore Gerald Johnson, but not Jose. He makes the effort to befriend Gerald. Folks found it interesting that the two of them were friends because Gerald was shy and quiet, whereas Jose was gregarious and outgoing. One of them lived in Villa Park, and the other lived in Garden Grove, which was in a more blue-collar neighborhood. So in that sense, it was an unlikely friendship. They weren't necessarily part of that in crowd. Oh my god. Yeah, Jacob he's again. hilarious. <laughs> if Jose was on the outskirts and Gerald Johnson was like, I don't, I mean, I can't, I don't even know anyone that was friends with him. It was clear that Gerald was Jose's best friend. They went to the beach together, they partied together, uh, they did they did so many things together. I got you. <laughs> On New Year's Eve, just three days after the murder, Gerald Johnson walks into police headquarters appearing to be on a mission. He said that a girl that he knew was threatened at a nearby shopping center. The girl was told that she better watch out, and he wanted to report that to us because he felt it had something to do with an O'Hara homicide. So where are you guys at with that whole investigation? It almost seemed like Gerald was fishing for what the police had with the Nahara case. Revealing nothing, police instead catch him by surprise with questions of their own. The story that was given about the $20,000 was that Gerald had received it from his grandfather. Investigators will have to verify the story. In the meantime, they have a request of their own. We were aware of the blonde hair that was in the ski mask, and out of the four boys that were together that night, Gerald was the only one that had blonde hair. So we asked him for his DNA, which he agreed to give. I later contacted his parents about the money. They had no idea that he had received $20,000 and didn't think that his grandfather would give him $20,000. Learning this, cops get ready to speak with Gerald again but that won't be easy to do. After the DNA was taken from Gerald, he disappeared. He had checked himself into a suite at a pretty nice hotel and wrote a suicide note to his parents, ordered filet mignon, and had planned to kill himself after the meal. Investigators have no idea that Gerald is planning something so extreme. All they know is their prime suspect cannot be found. And as long as he's missing, the Nahara's murder will be a mystery.